The correct information is every single president has said this. Incorrect would be Donald Trump's a rogue Nazi going out there and do that. The correct information would be Donald Trump is the only one who acted on his promise, whether you like it or not, or the New York Times likes it or not. Here's the question that I have uh, of the day. I would love to see your answers in the comment section. Where do you line up on Jerusalem, the embassy? What's going on? Genuinely, I'm curious because I've seen some actual anti-Semites support this just because they're tired of the Middle East situation. And then I've seen some pro-Israel people, some, some former Zionists kind of throw their hands up and say, I don't want to be involved anymore because it just seems like a quagmire no matter what. So I'm, I'm curious what people think about Israel, the embassy in Jerusalem, and, and uh, of course, my, my shill Jew money for the opinion that I'm about to express. <laughs> true. Checks keep clearing. Because apparently you can't have an opinion that differs from somebody without being a Zionist. Let's keep the Illuminati meeting secret <laughs> Tuesday. You're a Nazi Jew. You're a Nazi Jew. You got to remember so that. For Nazi those who don't person. know, the United States moved their embassy to Jerusalem. This is the story. It's been all over the place, trending everywhere for a few reasons. Uh, let's get started with this, because uh, Fen Computer. This comes from your uh, ho homeland, your home lab. From my ancient homeland. Yes, <laughs> Germany again opposed the United States embassy's move to Jerusalem, and now they're boycotting. Uh, the move. They're they're just mad. I don't even know what they're boycotting kind of the what opening ceremony, yeah. I guess. <laughs> We're not going to go to the announcement. Zero self-awareness. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think, I think they're past that. So just old German Nazis proving that Muslims today are just Nazis who beat their wives. <laughs> it seems, it seems, Nazism is actually a circle. Because once you read, read out all the Himmlers and the Goebbels, you embrace more classical socialism, and then open borders comes, and then and migrants, and then you're back to hating the Jews. Right, exactly. And then we're back, oh, we're back, circle. We're back here now. It's a circle. We had the trail of breadcrumbs, <laughs> and we went and we, we, tried, we, we tried to show the, the rich in the oven, because you didn't, but then we came back here. <laughs> <laughs> because you wouldn't. So here's one thing. Here, let's give some context here. In 1995, Congress passed an act that would relocate the embassy to Jerusalem and recognize it as Israel's capital no later than 1999. We've talked about this. It passed yeah. overwhelmingly. Uh, 93 to 5 in the Senate. I think 370-something to 30-something in the House. Okay? Um... Here's why. As we've covered in the past, this is a perfect example if you want to talk about media corruption getting mad at President Donald Trump. Every president in modern history since probably all of you watching this uh, have been alive, have said they were going to relocate the embassy to Jerusalem. Tale of the tape. Jerusalem is still the capital of Israel and must remain an undivided city accessible to all. That's as fair. soon as I take office, I will begin the process of moving the United States ambassador to the city of Israel That's as fair. chosen as its capital. Less fair, but I continue to say that uh, Jerusalem will be the capital of Israel. Okay. And I have we're said that fair before and I will say it again. And Jerusalem will remain the capital of Israel and it must remain undivided. We will move the American embassy to the Nazi! of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. Nazi! <laughs> Got him. He even yeah. has the pigment with the hair. True. <laughs> did all these presidents, did, did none of them believe that for real? Because why, why did <laughs> none of them follow and, through? Again, they all said it, and that's a fair Are question. Are they pandering? That's a fair question. They all said it, and there, there are a couple of different theories, because it would be overwhelmingly unpopular to say otherwise, or uh, all, because secretly they, they, they all feel this way about the Jews and Israel, as Helen Thomas openly expressed when she wasn't aware that she wasn't supposed to say things that are crazy. Any comments on Israel? We're arresting everybody today. Any comments on Israel? Tell them to get the hell out of Palestine. <laughs> Remember, these people are occupied, and it's their land. It's not German, it's not Poland. So where should they go? What should they do? They go home. Where's the home? Poland. So the Jews... Germany. <laughs> Germany did not about face. Nine! Nine! <laughs> Let's keep the capitals there! Huh? <laughs> bitch needs to get it laid. They're cool. She looks like a, like a Harvey Firestein banged the junk Muppet from Labyrinth. <laughs> Yeah, what were we going to say? I don't, I don't think any of the presidents had the stones to do it. I mean, what are we hoping is going to happen in the meantime? Are they hoping to pacify people enough? You'll send them back to their home. <laughs> I mean, why don't why don't you have the balls to move the capital there, or, or at least to move the uh, embassy there like Donald Trump did? What do you expect well, to happen? What they're claiming now is they're mad because uh, they're saying that moving Jerusalem to the capital, because the Palestinians want it, and if we're talking about two-state solution, that it, 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 we remove a bargaining chip for peace. Like, like we did with, when happen. we pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal and they immediately started exactly. burning the American flag, chanting death to America yeah. and pissing themselves, forgetting who they were for a few minutes from the carbon monoxide poisoning. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense for Israel to honor Palestine with anything. No, I mean, we're, we're like, at a point. It's like Marvin Gaye dropping a Father's Day yeah. album. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> it's nonsensical. <laughs>
<laughs> what, what typically happens when you appease a bully? You just give them time to do their bully. Well, hold on a second. Here's the thing. Before we get into the analogies, we need to get into the history because a lot of people just say, well, Israel's a bully. So to review the history, after the Holocaust, the Jewish state of Israel became internationally recognized by the UN. Okay? Yeah. Established as a nation in 1948. So the UN, who now might as well be called the Anti-Israel League, you started this! Okay? Uh, well, technically, you guys started it. <laughs> and the UN was just like, okay, yeah, we need yeah, a solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get back to the facts here. <laughs> So uh, that was how it, 1947, all right? Then it was immediately attacked by all the neighboring Arab nations who wanted to wipe them off the face of the earth. <laughs> Surprise. Spoiler alert, Israel won. Then, again, in 1967, Egypt, Syria, and Jordan tried to wipe Israel off the face of the map with the Six-Day War. I say the Six-Day War because on the seventh day, the Jews rested from kicking so much Arab ass. Boom. <laughs> So it's hard to lose bargaining chips with these nations when all they want is the complete and total destruction of Israel, mm. right? And when I say that, I know you're saying, hold on a second, why are you, that's hyperbolic. No, actually, it's in Hamas's original charter. Uh, direct quote, Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. And then it also says, there is no solution for the Palestinian question except through jihad. Initiatives, proposals, and international conferences are all a waste of time and vain endeavors. By the way, Hamas was democratically elected, mind you, in Palestine. Uh, so that's important to note. When you, It's like looking back in Sodom and Gomorrah, how many innocent people at this point? Well, you kind of did elect the people who said, if you elect me, I'll wipe out the Jews. And by the way, it's not like option number two was Ronald Reagan or even Barack Obama. Oh, no. They just had a different way about wiping yes. out the Jews. <laughs> but of course, it's Hamas ruled Palestine that the media sees as, as the victim. Uh, you've all seen the headlines, right? This is the top trend today on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, 50 odd something Palestinians killed by Israeli forces today. Which, listen, Loss of life, I understand it. There's nothing wrong with being empathetic. Uh, the reality, though, is that according to Israeli military sources, before you question the sources, just bear with me, the so-called protesters were actually trying to breach the wall, and some of them were terrorists no. slaying down mines. No. I know, I know, you can't trust anything the Jews say, right, because they're shifty and Ben Shapiro money. Okay, so let's just trust the democratically elected genociders here. I see, I see the footage of it. It looks like a Call of Duty war zone. Yes. It's yeah. insane. It looks like World War Z with These bodies. are not people with banners and little, little yeah. pussy hats. Yeah, they were out there with signs and all of a sudden got shot, but, but let's, that's not what happened. Let's say you don't trust the Israeli, uh, you don't trust the Israeli military, right? You're going to go with a democratically elected genociders wiping off all the Jews. Okay, Hamas, by the way, actually, it's on record, pays protesters to get injured. They want their own people to be hurt or killed yeah. just for the sake of headlines. It's like the George Soros of the Middle East. You make the bonus <laughs> round if you get injured laying down mines. Let's do this. Remove the wall. <laughs> Toss them all in there for a peaceful solution. What could possibly go wrong there? <laughs> I just, I just, it's, it's just completely nonsensical to me. Something else that people need to note, Palestinians, by the way, do you know who has it better than Palestinians in Palestine? Which, by the way, it's not a country, it's never been a country, it's not a thing. The other Arabic, they, they didn't want you, that's why you're there, that's why you're in this mess. But, do you know what's, war you, you know who has it better than Palestinians in Palestine? Palestinians in Israel. <laughs> okay, of course, Israel, first off, right off the bat, it's not even close, they rank much higher in the standard of living. But... The average income of Palestinians living in Israel is four times higher than those living in Palestine. $355 compared to $1,600, I think. Right now, Sven, was that, what was that per, uh, per month? Per month? Yes. Oh, that's, you know, there you go. Yeah. Some would say that's statistically significant. <laughs> better. What's the math there, BP? More better. Is that, not, is that 19,000 times? That's a lot more. It's, it's two gold. Yeah. It's <laughs> It's Jew gold in a wall. And by the way, before you, well, that doesn't prevent Many Palestinians freely serve as elected members of the Israeli government. Yeah. They like it, they're better. And this is one thing that's so funny for me. You know, we always talk about nuance. Uh, the left, like, well, you just see everything through moral absolutes. Uh, no, listen, but we, we do see the world through right and wrong. I know everyone in this room, there is yeah. right and there is wrong. And there is some gray area. Of course, no one is saying, no one is saying there is no gray area. But we do view the world as right versus wrong or sometimes correct versus incorrect. Whereas the left sees it as mean versus nice. It's not nice to have a wall. It's mean to have three hour pat downs at the airport. It's not nice when you have a more powerful military to use it effectively to protect your, your borders. It, it's really they have a better GDP, better military, way beyond the capacity of surrounding nations. So it's not nice for them to protect yeah, Mean it. and nice are not synonyms for right. moral and immoral. It's not, it's not, it's no comparison. It's, it's not nice to blow away Palestinians when they're trying to breach your wall. Just like, it's not nice to shoot a, ho shoot a home invader. Couldn't you have shot him in the leg? And here's the thing. Maybe some of those Palestinians just were trying to get in. Maybe they just wanted to see some tourist destinations. Maybe they wanted to go some holy spots. Maybe some of them were putting in landmines. Maybe the guy's sneaking into my house at 2 a.m. because he wants to make himself a sandwich. Maybe he wants to rape my wife. So when you're just dealing with, it's not nice to shoot him versus, is it right to shoot a home intruder in the middle of the night? It's certainly morally acceptable. Is it right 
to blow away 50 something plus people if some of them are laying down landmines? It's certainly morally acceptable, regardless of whether you think it's nice or it's not. You think it's mean? They take back territory because every time they relinquish it, rockets get fired like it's the 4th of July? Maybe, but it's not wrong. It's wrong to build tunnels that lead directly to Israeli grade schools and churches. That's wrong. Go Right now, go and Google YouTube video so you don't think it's just from me and my big Jew money. Grade schools in Israel, and look at the shelters they have and the, the, the buzzers and sirens that go off like clockwork every day because of another rocket being launched at them. It's all right. It's like when you tucked under your desk when it was the 1950s. That's what these kids have to do in Israel every single day. It may not be nice for the Israeli military to effectively target Palestinians and then blow away these tunnels, killing plenty of these people in the process, but it's not morally wrong. It is morally wrong to target women and children. And if you look at the difference between Israel, let's even assume the worst, which is from the media, okay? Let's assume the worst that they're okay with some collateral damage. A lot of the time people say, well, look, you didn't have to do the kid was just throwing a rock. He was throwing, he didn't ever, well, listen, you get a little bit, I get it, you could be a little trigger happy when last time you thought it was a rock, and it's a rocket. On the flip side, Hamas wants the extermination, the extinguishment of all Jews. They're not okay with collateral damage. Their charter is focusing on collateral damage. The end game is to kill Jewish children and women. Then you come, back, you come back to me and talk to me about nice versus mean. It's about right versus wrong. And as far as the media is covering it with the embassy, it's about correct versus incorrect. The correct information is every single president has said this. Incorrect would be Donald Trump's a rogue Nazi going out there and do that. The correct information would be Donald Trump is the only one who acted on his promise, whether you like it or not, or the New York Times likes it or not. Incorrect would be to act as though he's somebody who's being inconsistent. This is one, put it on the scoreboard for President Donald Trump. And he, he doesn't always get those. I'm gonna give him that one. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, or if you want to continue to enjoy free content, support us at lotterwithcredit.com slash mugclub, where you get the full nightly show. An hour, every day free, along with all of our friends' content. If not, you don't want to do any of those things. You're probably just here, you're watching me seething. You came here to hate watch. That being said, the internet was created for people like you.